So I get the privilege of introducing somebody who I have known for, I don't, I'm not going to say how many years, but I have known her since she was a teenager, before she was ever married, and uh, she was dating her husband, and uh, who's on camera, <laughs> woo, woo, woo. and uh, just fell in love with her even when she was a teenager. I was, I was her youth leader. Um, and then just have, we just remained friends over the years, and, uh, and now she's actually my assistant, too. So God is faithful, isn't he? Yes. And uh, this woman is power-packed. She's full of the Holy Spirit. She's full of the joy of the Lord. If you know her, you know she's full of the joy of the Lord. She's just bubbly, isn't she? Yes. But that's Jesus inside her. And so, and she laughs a lot, which I love because sometimes we laugh so hard in the office that we have tears coming down our eyes. It's hilarious. But we really do get a lot of work done. Sometimes we're quiet and we're working, and, sh and all of a sudden she'll go, no one would believe us. <laughs> I'm like, what? She goes, people just think all we do is laugh all the time, but we really do work. <laughs> but. She is a joy and a delight. Please give it up for Miss Amy Martin. Wow, that was so much encouragement and so many wonderful words. And um, thank you for this opportunity to speak. Um, I don't take it lightly. Matter of fact, when she said, when she asked me if I wanted to uh, speak today. First, I almost fell off my chair, and then um, I said, well, do you think I can talk for 40 minutes? And she was like, that's not a problem. <laughs> so, um, you know, I just, you are such an amazing, awesome, genuine pastor, and uh, I can't cry at the very beginning of this, but, um, and it just, I treasure you as a friend and a mentor in my life, so thank you. Just to give you a little background, um, I know just recently it was announced that I was, God had given me the role of women's director here. And um, I've had women's ministry on my heart for as long as I can remember, probably before kids. And those of you that don't know me, I have a 16-year-old, so it's been a lot of years. And um, I didn't know what that would mean later. I just prayed about it. God, you know, God puts desires in our hearts for a reason, right? And I just prayed that God would help me um, through wherever season I was at, to just let that, let that shine and just use that in the influence of those around me. And he has done that. You know, I have had a couple people that I know really well over the years say to me, well, what is it that you like about women's ministry? And it's like, the honest truth is you. I love you ladies. I really do. I love meeting with you, having coffee with you, praying. If, if you share an ounce of your life with me, I honestly, it's an honor. And I just love praying. And we all have a story. We all have a journey. And we need each other, right? And I also know that it's important to have ladies that have been through some things before me that have, are a little bit older and they pour into me. And as I pour into those, it's all God. He pours into me wisdom and encouragement through older ladies. And that is exactly what the Bible says we're to do. So I just, some of you may not or not have known that, and I just want to share that because um, God's put this passion inside of me. So I'm very honored to have this opportunity to speak to you today. So let's go ahead and pray. Father, we just thank you so much for who you are. I thank you, God, that you have this appointed time to speak to us. God, that some ladies may great effort to get here and now they're here and I pray for distractions to be stopped and that you would open up their minds and their hearts to hear you and to feel your presence and father I just pray that you would speak through me I don't want to say anything more or less than what you want to say here it's all you and we thank you for it I thank you for your word father it is everything you are everything to me I love you Lord and we pray these things in Jesus name So I, um, sorry, I'm just getting my little notes up. I probably won't refer to them much, but I need them just in case. Um, so I, I don't know how many of you know, but over the holidays, my family, we all got COVID. 
And it was after that that it was my first day back to work, and I'm praying, and I'm in the car, and I'm just praying for stamina for the day. Because those of you who've had it know that the fatigue part is real. And um, sometimes it was just awesome to be able to get a shower that day, you know. So my first day back to work, I was just praying for God to give me a sharp mind and to help me work for him. And that was going to require energy that I didn't have in my own strength. And he began to show me that he's not only restoring me, but he's restoring my health back to better than it was. Now, that's awesome. And so I was just thanking him and praying and just, oh, God, thank you. And uh, then he began to show me some of your faces and some things you're going through. And I know I'm not the only one who's been told things about their health. Some of you have been diagnosed with things or you've been told that you might have this or you might have that or here's the side effects. And with COVID, they know some of the side effects, right? They're figuring it out as they go and you hear about it. You hear you may experience this, you may have this. And it's like, no, I don't have to have that just because they told me that. And so God just started depositing into me, my word trumps what you've been told. My word is bigger. I've already died for you. You know what my word says. You don't have to own that, and you don't have to take on those side effects. Long term, they don't know. But you know what? God's already died for me, and he's died for you, for our healing and our wholeness, and we don't have to take on any of those side effects. And so it, it changed the way I started praying about it, and it changed the way that I was talking about it. But what was amazing is God started to show me, like I said, some of you and what you're going through, and some of you need to be restored of all kinds of things, and there's not enough hours to go over everything that God could restore in us. I'm going to focus on a few points today, but um, some of you, it's been relationships, it's been your confidence, it's been your finances. I mean, if 2020 taught us nothing else, it taught us not to rely on anything except God, because things get canceled. All of a sudden, jobs are gone. How am I going to pay for my bills? Some people might not have even known how they were honestly going to pay for their groceries. And so, wow, I just saw a gal I haven't seen in years. I just cried. <laughs> Stop me for a second. Um, and so I just, God is here to restore us, every one of us. And I'm excited about that. <laughs> I am just, God is so good. So I looked up the actual meaning of restoration, and it's the action of returning something to a former owner, place, or condition. The action of returning something to a former owner, place, or condition. So think about it. What is it? that the enemies tried to steal from you, the lies that you've been told, things you've believed, because God wants to restore that. And I believe there's a special anointing here today that he doesn't want to just restore it. He wants to bring it back better than it was because that's the word he gave me for you. Amen. And one of the first topics I'm going to talk about is confidence. And it's funny that God would tell me to talk about confidence because if you saw me even a year ago, my confidence was in the floor. The first time Pastor Starlene said, do you want to do praise reports? And I thought, what? I, I can't get up there and talk for a minute. I didn't tell her that. <laughs> but even just being in front of people to speak for a moment, I was scared and I was, I, my confidence was in the ground. But by God, I had to rely on his word stand in faith, speak his word over myself until I finally got delivered from that inadequacy that the enemy, I believe, is one of the biggest things he wants to take from us. And um, I'm just going to read a quick little paragraph out of this book. I know this book is called Fervent by Priscilla Shire. And if you attend this church, you've heard us talk about it twice today <laughs> um, and several times the last couple weeks. It is amazing and awesome. But one of the things that I want to read to you is out of a chapter where she's talking about your identity. And she starts every chapter out this way, and it's pretty bold, but it really makes you think. And it says, if I were your enemy, I devalue your strength and magnify your insecurities until they dominate how you see yourself. 
disabling and disarming you from fighting back, from being free, from being who God has called you to be. I'd work hard to ensure that you never realize what God has given you, so you'll doubt the power of God within you. I mean, those are some harsh words. And sometimes it's hard to just see straight up what the enemy's doing, but, but we've all been there. And if you haven't been there, you might be like right now. I don't know. But I know it's something that even though God delivered me from, it's something I have to continually come before the Lord and ask him to continually help me. Because God's word says we are his masterpiece. I love that word. I mean, think about it. Masterpiece. Think about when you create something for someone or you're getting a gift for them, or you're doing, you put a lot of work and time in it, you probably posted on social media, taking pictures of it, you can't wait, it's just beautiful. That's how God sees us. And if we can grasp that, sometimes we can't make sense of it with our mind, just let his presence show you that. Speak the word over yourself. It's powerful. Yes. So, we had been attending IBC for a few months, and we were asked to, if we wanted to take over, be directors of the hospitality. And Pastor Sharon, when she asked my husband and I, I think both of our mouths dropped open. Like, what? We had been praying, God, use us how you want to use us. It's really easy to pray that, right? But get ready. Like you just talked about this morning. <laughs> if you're asking to be used, God hears you, and he will. But um, I was scared. Like I said, my confidence was at that point still on the ground. And I prayed about it. We prayed, my husband and I, and God said, you're going to do this, but you're going to have to rely on me for every step of the way because it's nothing you can do in your own strength. And if you looked at our, our calendar in the natural, if you looked at where we were at in the natural, I mean, people that are, people thought we were crazy. You don't have time for that. Well, ministry doesn't always come at a time when it's convenient. And if God told me to do it, I've got to be faithful, and I've got to step out and stretch out there, even if it's hard. And I thought, I was crippled with fear. Matter of fact, there was a day that nobody knows about that I sat in that parking lot having a panic attack. And I know it sounds silly, like, you're working in the kitchen. No, it's not just working in the kitchen. It doesn't matter if you're scrubbing floors, working in the kitchen, if you're up here speaking. It doesn't matter. Whatever God's called you to do is for him, and it's so important. But I was so caught up in not wanting to let you down or you down. I wanted everything to be perfect. And, oh, my gosh, and my husband, thank God for him, he said, you can't go in there like that. <laughs> <laughs> and I was crying, and I was just like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe that I'm worried if I put the fork in the wrong spot. I mean, this is crazy. And he actually drove me down to the waterfront and he said I want you to get out of the car and I want you to stare at the water and I want you to breathe and I did I breathed we prayed we worshiped we came back and I could walk in that kitchen and it had nothing to do with me but you know what I found in that kitchen ladies loving on me healing came through that kitchen because it didn't matter if I put the fork away wrong, everything didn't have to be perfect, and I wasn't doing it for you. I was doing it for God. But what he blessed me back with was I can never put it all into words. But I had to pray through it and step out in faith. But my confidence was literally, like I said, in the ground. And it was only through his word and through his miraculous power and through being up here. I came up for every altar call for a while. I was a mess. But God is so good. I'm going to read you um, the story about the prodigal son. It says, um, Luke 15, 11 through 22. Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in the wild living. After he'd spent everything, there was a severe famine that the whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating. No one gave him anything. 
When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare, and yet here I am starving. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven, I have sinned against you, I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and you. Against you, I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to the servant, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Bring a ring on your, on your finger, put sandals on his feet, bring the fattened calf, and let's celebrate. So some of you, I feel like, can relate to this, but maybe you're going through stuff that you actually feel desperate. This is not what the message, this, this scripture is all about, and I'm going to get to the point of that in a moment, but as I was thinking about how desperate he was, that he spent everything, a famine came, 2020 came, some of us weren't prepared. Some of us don't have extra money to put in savings. Some of us, it just, it, just, it just hit, right? Like you mentioned today, you couldn't even get toilet paper. I mean, it was like a modern day almost famine, it felt like at times. Um, but he was such in a desperate place that he actually wanted the food from with the, that the pigs were eating. And some of you have had your head down. You've been told lies. You've been told lies by people. The enemy uses sometimes closest people. You've had experiences. Maybe you've had relationships. Whatever it is, we've all had those moments where our head is down. And God wants us to be victorious because if you're walking with your head down, I can't see the light of Jesus in you if you're looking down. And so if you look up, God says, I'm the lifter of your head. Lift up your head. And sometimes, like I said, it takes speaking the word over, over yourself, putting yourself in those scriptures and just speaking it, praying it, and then pretty soon you start to believe it because faith comes by hearing the word of God. And then you're in his presence and you can't help but feel his love because it's so amazing. And that's my next point, is love. Love of God, I think. You might... I want to talk about giving love away, but I know we can't give love away until we have the love of God inside of us. Yeah. And Ephesians 3.18 says, May you have the power to understand how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. That's powerful. Some of the relationships that you've been in, there's been damage. It's caused you to question love, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But... Um, I want to read Ephesians 2.10, and I just talked about this, for we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he's planned for us long ago. And here's what I want to do. I want to reread that scripture, and I want to read it together, and I want you to read it with me out loud so your own ears can hear you, and I want you to put I in the word we. It's powerful. Okay, so let's do this together. Ephesians 2.10 says... For I am God's masterpiece. He has created in me new in Christ Jesus so I can do the good things he's planned for me long ago. Do you see how that makes it personal? He's created good things for me. He's created good things for you. And that's how you pray out scripture. And go home and, and be, be with Jesus in the car. Be with him at home. Be with him wherever you are. He's with you. I want you to close your eyes with me for a moment. And I want you to just picture Jesus. We know he's here. But if you saw him, if you can see him, Normally we think, what would we say to Jesus if we saw him? I mean, there's songs about it. I might, I might not even be able to speak. But what would he say to you? What would he say to you? I believe that in that he would say that I love you. You can open your eyes. Deuteronomy 7, 9 says, He is, fa he is the faithful God who is, keeps his covenant for thousands of generations 
and he lavishes, lavishes his unfailing love on those who love him and obey his commands. He lavishes his love on you. There's nothing you can do, good, bad, in, indifferent, that will make him love you any more, any less. And I know we've heard that before, but do you believe it? I mean, he died on the cross. That was the ultimate example of love, but he would have even died if it was just for you because he cares about you that much. I remember when, I know this is kind of a crazy example, but I was in Disney World. We had just started attending here, and it was the last night, and the fireworks were going, and I was just overwhelmed with God's love and just... Thank you, Lord, for this time with my family. And I heard him whisper, get ready, because you're about to be in a season of receiving love like you've never received before. And I was like, how could, I, how could it be any more? God's all about more. It's never enough. He will give you more. And I would go to bed weeping, just crying over his presence and his love for me. And, and my healing began to happen, and I began to see myself different. And and I was so loved that I still can't even comprehend it. By him, I still am, but I mean, and by all of you. You are so good at this. You love on people because you have Christ inside of you. And I got to experience that, and I still do, and I'm so thankful. And that leads me to my last point, which is the relationships that we have. Some of those relationships need restored. And I think sometimes we think of relationships restored as, okay, there's a lot of relationships that maybe I need to go back to and make amends with, and there might be. God's all about restoration. Sometimes he might restore relationships by bringing you new ones. And it's, sometimes it's just not how we, all, we see it. But some of you have, lost relationships because of divorce or death. Some of you have lost relationships with your kids or your parents. I could go on, and I've experienced those myself. And we just want to fix it, or we get angry and we don't want to fix it. It's just easier to just turn away and move on. It only feels easier in the moment, but it catches up to us. And sometimes I think that rejection is more of a sting than death. Death is horrible and here on earth for those we care about. And it's, there's so much grief. And, and God wants us to grieve, and he gave us that for a, a little bit. We can't camp there. We don't want to own it. We don't want to live there. We've got to move through it. And it's only by God that we can, truly can move through it the right way. But some of us have been, re like, rejected. I mean, how does it feel when you, I think we could probably all relate to this at some point in our life, when you have this really great friendship or this deep relationship with someone and all of a sudden it's just, it just ends. And it's like, wow, that, that hurts. Because now it's not that it just, it just separated. It's you actually got to know me and you chose that I'm not good enough. And that can hurt for years and it can the enemy fills us with lies about new relationships and how is that going to happen and my, my walls are up, my heart's closed and hard and we all know that God doesn't want us to operate that way because he's got victory and he has a plan for each one of you and he wants you to hold your head up high like I talked about just a few minutes ago and share the love of Jesus and the enemy just wants us hardened hearts and looking down and take all of our joy and everything that God is trying to give us. And sometimes the pain makes it bigger than God, right? But God's word trumps all of the lies, the enemy. And whatever the enemy has tried to steal from you, God wants to restore it right back to you and even better than it was before. I'm going to be really vulnerable for a minute. <laughs> Not that I haven't already, but um, so we had started attending IBC, and we, it was a hard transition. It was easy in a sense that 
I've never been more loved on when I walk in a building. That's honestly the truth. But it was so hard because we were grieving. I remember just, I would come in here and I would feel so loved and then I would go home and day after day, weeks after weeks, turned into months. I've never cried so much in my life. I loved you, but I missed these people over here that I was doing life with too. And my phone's blowing up and they think we're coming back. There was no plan to come back. And we didn't come here because we were gonna try it out and see if we liked it. I mean, after knowing pastors for years, trust me, I wanted to come here. But we couldn't come here unless God told us to. And he did. And he sh started sharing it with me and I, I was like, okay. And I was praying through it and praying about it and I knew God would show my husband. And he did, and he showed him in a dream, and it was a God dream. And he has God dreams, and he knows the difference between a real dream and a God dream. And when he woke up that morning, the look on his face was like, I, I, I got to get with Jesus right now. I was like, okay. So we stepped out in obedience. We stepped out by faith, but we were hurting. The Lord kept telling me, you've got to step out of the way and let me do this. And I'm telling you what happened when I got out of the way is that God did more miracles. Because all of a sudden, he's, he might not have kids his own age in a youth group, but he's got youth pastors. I mean, Michael and Jordan came to my house. They would take his call late at night if he needed it. He had a safe place to talk. And he was so loved by our youth group and our pastors and our youth pastors. And we, he might not have had kids his own age here. But he has a young army of men here that are a little bit older, but man, they have stood with him. They have prayed with him. They drove out to our house for 45 minutes away just to take him to breakfast. And finally, we could get our eyes off of what ourselves and our pain and see how God wanted to use us and how he was using other people to bless us. And those relationships that I missed so bad, the grief finally lessened. And then went away and I'll always miss them and treasure those friends and it's not like I can't be friends with them still it's just you know it's hard you don't see them as often and you try and I had to give some space but there was one day where I walked in and um, I met Kathy Converse <laughs> <laughs> and those of you that know Kathy and most of you know her longer than I have but she's just a prime example of sharing God's love. And she she was up here, and it was a few minutes before church started, and I I walked up, I was talking to Kate or something, and all of a sudden I meet Kathy, and she just embraces me. And I thought, oh, that's so sweet. Ooh, let me just stay here a while. <laughs> but then she didn't let go. And I thought, this is awesome. I don't even know this lady, but she's got the best hug, and I'm just going to park here for a minute. And she, when she was finally released me a little bit, she looks at me and she says, I know you don't know me, but I, my name's Kathy, and my job here is to love. And I was like, yeah, I caught that. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm loving this. And she said, if you could see my heart, you would see that it has scars from being ripped and torn and bleeding. And God's healed me. And he's going to do the same for you. And I thought, how does she even know any of this? How does she know that I'm hurting? Because I walk in here and smile. I mean, isn't that good enough? What she doesn't know is that that was the day that I had a panic attack in the parking lot. God knew that I just needed that that day. And he knows what you need. And he's so good and he's so faithful. I just want to read First Peter 5.10 in closing. It says, And the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, 
will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. Some of us have suffered too long. Some of you are just hurting longer and deeper than God ever designed it for you. And I know what it's like to have that kind of grief. And then you think, in my situation, it was like, well, every time I'm a little stronger, it's good. But then I look at my kids who are hurting, and grief would start all over. But I'm so grateful for that time with God because it had me on my face with him, relying on him like never before. And he healed my heart, and my family is thriving here, and it's the love of God pouring out to me and my family in our time with him, but it's also the love of God pouring out through all of you. And I know we've talked about harvest, and you've heard me say this before, but I'm going to say it again because it's so true. People are coming in these doors. People you work with, your neighbors, there's people all around you that are hurting. And it's time for you to be whole and healed and restored and lift your head up and shine the love of Jesus like you never have before because these people need what you have inside of you and you can reach someone I can't. You know that parable about the prodigal son? What's incredible is Jesus tells that story for the point of at the end when the son is going to come back and he's ashamed and he's messed up. He's messed up and now he couldn't even find food and he sinned. But don't you love the part where the father sees him and shows compassion on him and not only says, embraces him, but let's put the finest robes and the best jewels and let's celebrate. There was no condemnation or anything. That's how Jesus is with us, right? It doesn't matter how dirty or messy your past is or what the enemy's told you or if you think you can't or you're not good enough or you haven't earned it or you have earned it. It doesn't matter because he just wants to embrace you right where you're at. It's free. And restoration is huge because when we're restored, woo, we've got a pep in our step and we're celebrating. We're going to sing a song here in a minute called better word. I love that song. And as the band sings it, I just want to invite you up here. The altars are open if you want to come up here. If God's speaking to you about an area in your life that needs restored, or maybe there's many areas. And I just want to encourage you to listen to the words of that song because God's word trumps whatever diagnosis you've been told. God's words trumps whatever your finances are looking like and the enemies tried to lie to you. God's word trumps what you've been told and the lies that you've been told. And it's about his word is the better word. But before I do that, I just want to invite those of you that maybe don't know this love I'm talking about. The love of God might be foreign to you. What do you, what do you mean? What is that? Or maybe some of you, it's just a little rusty that relationship with God needs restored to be to its fullness. And so I'm going to go ahead and um, let's just close our eyes. And for those of you that can relate to, to some of the things I just said, maybe you don't know this Jesus I'm talking about. Maybe you've heard of him, but you're scared. This is a safe place. This is a place full of love with people who are rooting for you. And maybe you've tried some things out in the world and those don't last. It's not, it's not what the enemy tries to invite us to think it's so wonderful. Those things didn't work. So I just invite you, whether you're in this room or you're watching online, if that's you and you want to ask Jesus into your heart, I pray that you would just raise your hand or if your relationship needs restored. Online, if you're watching, just raise your hand up and you can pray this prayer with us. I'd like you to repeat this prayer with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you died and rose again. 
we thank you for who you are. I invite you, Jesus, into my heart. And from this day forward, I will live for you. You are my Lord and Savior. Thank you for forgiving me of my sins. I'm renewed and made whole in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Refresh me, 